Well, you know what? It's really sort of hard to teach somebody how to use a microscope if you don't have a microscope to be able to use, okay? So uh, while we're doing this uh, online uh, uh, stuff, um, I think it's probably for completeness sake, it's probably a good idea for me to just to tell you about the microscope and how the microscope is used. Um, the only thing is like any other skill, uh, the more you use it, the better you get. Um, and uh, obviously, unless you have a microscope at home to play around with or have a couple extra hundred bucks you want to buy one, um, you know, it, this will have to wait for later actually to, to practice some skills. But let's talk about the microscope anyway and just sort of give you an idea, again, for completeness sake. Probably the first thing you need to know is the parts of the microscope because they all, the, you know, they all have a special purpose. Okay, so let's go over these individually. This up here is the eyepiece. Okay, this is the eyepiece. This right here, and that's what you're going to look in. This is a this is a binocular uh, microscope because it has two eyepieces. Um, there is mon monocular with one only one tube. Have one tube that you could look through. This has two. Okay, now that's sort of the the tube is nice. The eyepiece is nice simply because what happens is you're able to take the eyepieces and move them out or move them close to be able to. Um, uh, what, what you want to see when you look through the eyepieces, you want to see a single round field of vision. If you see two that are like overlapping each other, you can adjust those eyepieces just a little bit until all of a sudden the two of them come, and now you have one pick, one single circular. Uh, area of illumination that you're looking at. Okay, so eyepieces can move back and forth to accommodate. Well, um, what's they, what they have is called the pupillary distance. Pupillary distance is the distance from the pupil on one eye to the distance of the pupil on the other. And most microscopes, binocular microscopes, have the op, uh, uh, the uh, availability to be able to move the eyepieces around um, to be able to um, uh, get your your pupillary distance just right, so you have one single solid circular field of vision. Okay, um, inside the eyepiece are what are called oculars, okay? Th these areas in here are called oculars, and they come in different powers, okay? On most microscopes uh, that you'd probably use, we either have a 10x or a 20x, tw 10, time, 10 times magnification or 25 magnif 20 times magnification. And they could just be swapped out. You just pull them out and pop the new ones in, okay? It's pretty simple. Also, um, your microscopes usually have something that are called diopters, okay? Now, your vision in one eye is sometimes different from the vision in the other eye. I know that when I get a prescription for my glasses, my one eye is different from the other. Well, the microscope, now the glasses will account for that, but if I don't wanna wear my, my, my glasses, I could actually use these diopters to be able to, to get my eyes so, so that I could, I could change. The diopters are small lenses that will change your vision, your eye, your when they when they do your eye test, okay, what they do is they have these little lenses, and those are diopters. When the um, when the doc looks inside your eye with that little ophthalmoscope, what they're doing is they're changing diopters, which are just lenses. So some many of many of the um, binocular microscopes will have the ability to be able to adjust for differences in vision from one side to the other. Okay, once we go down from the eyepiece, okay, uh, which is again adjustable, the oculars can be the ocul. This these are called again that right in there be called ocular, the oculars, okay? And once I come down from that, I get to what's called the head, okay? And this area right here would be the head. Sometimes there's some other names. I'll show you a couple other things for that, but that's called the head, okay? Below that is the nose piece, okay? Now this nose piece revolves around, okay? And it has lenses on that, okay? And these, these lenses are called objectives, okay? These are called the objective lenses, and they're different powers. There's like a four power, a four times power, a maybe 10 times power, uh, 40 times power. And there's usually one that has another little special thing that's called oil immersion, where they can actually get much higher power by actually uh, putting a drop of oil on the slide and actually using that as part of the lens, okay? But those are the objectives, and those objectives can be just switched around. What happens is you'll find, if you ever use a microscope, when you change the objective, what'll happen is you could, you could, you'll rotate that little nose piece, and all of a sudden it'll click into spot. And what it'll do is you'll sort of like, lock into a certain area. Then I could just push a little bit more and lock it into the next objective, okay? So that has to be locked in, okay? So that's called the nose piece with the objective lenses. And those objective lenses uh, can be, uh, are, are in different levels of magnification, okay? Uh, it depends upon the microscope. This area back here is called the arm, okay? When you carry a microscope, it's always important you carry a microscope with two hands. They're not really all that light. I mean, you don't have to prove that you're very macho or anything like that, but basically what you do is you grab the microscope uh, by the arm, around the arm, okay, which is um, it's just metal, a metal piece. You grab it on the arm, you lift it up, and you put your hand underneath the bottom, and the bottom is called the base. 
is called the base, okay? So then you carry it, holding it by the arm and on the base, okay? And then you can move that around, okay? And carry it to where you need to go. What happens is the next part down on this arm is called the stage. It's called the stage. And this large platform here is called the stage. And that's where you're going to put the slide. And the slide actually goes into what's called a slide clip right there. If you look, look, if you look at this one on, on, on this side, see if you, if you, if you look really close, uh, there's like a little tab right there. All you do is you pull that tab back, which swings this bar backwards. You put the slide, it locks in this corner right there. You stick it right here. Then you let that go and it comes and it locks the slide in place. That way the slide's not moving around on the stage. That way when you get it in a certain position, you know, when you, when you start to move the stage around, because instead of moving the slide around, like the older microscopes that didn't have this type of a stage clip, rather than moving the slide around, you just move the stage. Okay, and that makes it easier to 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 uh, be able to review an entire slide. Okay, uh, on the side of the stage over here. Okay, and I'll just circle it right. Whoop! I don't want to do that. Okay, I can't. I can't go back. This one will show the same thing. Okay, uh, it shows the exact same thing that we saw on the last one. Okay, again, here's the oculars. You know, the eyepiece with the oculars, okay, the eyepiece with the oculars. Hit that diopter adjustment right there. You can actually adjust the thing. Again, we talked about the head. We talked about the frame or the arm, which is the back part back in here. We talked about our objective lenses, and these are all the same. It depends on the company. I mean, almost everything is, is really close to about the same. So here's my revolving nose piece. There's the objective lenses, the different objective lenses. Here's that mechanical stage, okay? And again, there's that stage clip or that, uh, that uh, slide clip that's there. They'll lock the slide in, okay? The next thing I was going to show you was a stage control, okay? Now, on the side, okay, coming down, okay, from the side of the stage, right in here is is like a bar that comes down or a rod and that rod has two little screws on it there's one like right here and there's one right one right here okay and what happens is depends upon which one i move it's going to move the stage it has an x y type of a arrangement one of them will move it horizontally one will move it anterior posteriorly okay so that way you don't have to move the move the uh, slide around all you use is use your stage control to move the stage move the stage around Okay, and that's a very that's that's really very helpful. Okay, and you you get really good at it. you'll know which way to go. You just start turn it and boom, the stage is going to move. And, you, and when you when, when the stage moves, it moves. Obviously, when you look through the through the oculars and the eye in the in, in the eyepiece, what's going to happen is um, uh, you can you'll see the slide move underneath the your your field of vision. Okay, so that's just called a stage control. Okay, a couple other things before I get to the adjustment. Okay, the next area I just want to mention something about is the condenser, and that's this area right down here. But before I get to the condenser, let me get to the illuminator. It's illumination or the illuminator or the light power or, or the light, uh, you know, a, a light source. Okay, and basically there's gonna be a little switch. Sometimes it's on the bottom on the base here. Sometimes it's on the side. Sometimes it's in the back. You have to look around for it. It doesn't really make much much of a difference. And you can actually control the brightness of that by a little uh, a little wheel. You can spin the wheel and make it brighter, or you can decrease the brightness. Sometimes, looking through a microscope, you you don't want to have so much light that you can't see. You want to, like sometimes for for a contrast. Sometimes by lowering the light a little bit, it improves your contrast a little bit. But what happens? You can also change things by what's called a condenser. The condenser is like an iris, okay, and it sort of like shrinks a little bit, which decreases the amount that the field of vision as well as the as the light that comes through it. And that's underneath. And there's a little uh, there's a little pin that comes out of this thing. It sticks right in the bottom of the stage little pin that's and all you do is you just move that and that that will open and close this iris that's that's right below that and that's right below where you're looking through with the microscope okay because what's going to happen is that the light's going to come right up to the bottom there's going to be a hole comes right up through there and then the light's going to go in there going to bounce off a, a mirror arrangement there and will come out through the area of the eyepiece and the oculars okay so that's what that's all about now one last thing i want to show you and this is probably what's the most important okay i mean you can get a slide on there and it could be all nice and you know it could be a nice slide and stuff like that but if you can't see it and you can't make it and it's not in focus it's not going to work okay on the side of the microscope right here is the adjustment knobs okay there's usually there could be one on both sides okay um but at least the, the, uh, this one shows it over here and you can see this adjustment knob here there are actually two knobs 
one larger knob, which is this one right here, okay, and one smaller knob, which is this one right here, and they do two different things. What happens is the larger knob is the course adjustment. So what you do is, and I'll explain the procedure that I use at looking at some of the microscope. You use, you move the course adjustment knob until you get close to focus. When you're, you know, when it looks focused, okay. You want to get as close to focus as possible with a course adjustment. But what happens is then once I get it to that point, I could fine tune it a little bit, make it a little bit sharper and stuff like that by just using that outer knob, that fine adjustment that's out in here, okay. And so you just have to twist that a little bit. Also, when I change powers on the objectives, when I rot rotate my nose piece and change the objective powers, if I have it in focus under a lower power, it's really close under a higher power, okay, if you've done it right. And all you have to do is usually just to use the fine adjustment a little bit one way or the other, and you're going to get back in focus without having to use the coarse adjustment, okay? So that's that. If I look at here's another just image. This is a little bit more similar that we uh, very similar to what we had. You know, a lot of these words you know you've seen before. You know, the arm. Here's the coarse focus, the fine focus or fine adjustment, the base. The base is the bottom. Here's the light source. There's the condenser. You actually see that little peg sitting right out right there. Uh, stage clip, and you can see it here. So there's a little bar right there, and that's on a spring, so it comes back. When you pull that little sprint bar back, it comes back this way. You put the slide, you lock the slide in on the stage there, and that spring with that bar comes, you know, let go of the spring and it, and it holds the, holds the, uh, the uh, um, slide in place. Again, the stage, the objectives, the revolving nose piece, the oculars, okay, uh, which is there on the eyepiece. Sometimes the eyepiece, you know, this area is also called the tube. Okay, so those are the parts of the microscope that we want to know. This is the same thing, it's just another one. You know, it shows me about the same. Here's eyepieces or oculars, which are 10 power. Uh, you know, sometimes the, 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 the also um, the head, you know, of a, of, a, of a binocular microscope may actually rotate around. So maybe you want to go look at it with the, with the, with the head, with the, with the oculars pointing this way. That's fine. Some of these will rotate around and they're able to be adjustable that way. But we see about the same thing there. There's the re revolving nose piece, which is right there, which clicks into place. The objectives. Here's that spring arm of that slide holder. Like we said, there's a little bar right there. You pull that back and this little bar this little bar right here goes backwards. You put the slide right in between that little thing right there. Let that bar come back and holds the slide in place. Okay. Um, uh, here's the stage, obviously. Uh, th this is for the, this is that iris lever, which is for that condenser that opens and closes an iris. And that's this area right here. That's this condenser. The condenser is basically this area right here. This thing that sticks down from the bottom of the stage. Okay. Um, there could be other filters that people could use. They have polarized filters, uh, quartz compensators, all kinds of different filters, but that's beyond what we even have to think about at this point. It's not really worthwhile. Here's the uh, the illuminator, you know, the which basically for the light source, uh, on off switch, which could be multiple different places and stuff like that. Uh, there's again, here's the the, the a brightness control. You know, at this point right here, which could you know make it brighter or less bright. Uh, here's here's the stage controls. If you look right here, stage, the stage, stage movement controls, which are again two little, two little wheels that you roll and rotate. You can move the stage. One will make, one will make the stage go this way. One makes the stage go this way. That's all it is. Okay. Here's the, here's the course adjustment, the fine adjustment, and stuff like that. Um, slide holder, limb or arm all the same thing okay and basically that's the parts of the microscope i think that those are, are important to know i might ask a question or so somewhere down the road about the various parts of a, of a microscope but uh, i think you should probably know it because when you get into another course when you finally get into a real lab you'll be able to and, you, and you're able to use microscope you'll have at least at least a little bit of idea as to what you're looking at okay so how do we use the microscope okay uh, again the more you use it the more you practice the better off the more skill you get with it, okay. I'm gonna get rid of me down there, so you can see this. The more skill you get, um, you, you get you get the microscope and you get it to the where you you know put it on, you plug it in because obviously it's electrical, and you turn on the illumination, okay. Then what happens is you could actually look through the oculars and you can move those according to your pupillary distance from side to side until you have one circular field of vision, okay. Uh, then what you do is take the revolving nose piece 
and put it to the lowest power, the lowest power, which is that objective. The objective is actually that, that two with the lens, okay? So use it and rotate it around so that what happens is you're looking through the uh, objective with the lowest power, okay? That's going to be helpful to start out with because you, always, you, you should probably start looking at lowest power and then move up from there. It's much easier to do it that way, okay? Then what you're going to do is you're going to put the slide on the stage, okay? You just take the slide and put it on the stage and put it on that and hook it in place with that stage clip so it stays stable. So when you're moving the stage around, you know, the slide's not going to be popping up and moving all over the place, okay? Uh, then what you want to do is you can actually look. What you'll see is through the center of the slide, you'll see where that light source is coming up. And what you want to try to do is just the slide from the side so that the area you want to view is centered and illuminated from below. Okay, So that light source is going to be coming from there. It's going to go through the stage. There'll be a hole in the stage, and the slide's on the stage. And you want to see that area that you want to look at underneath the, the you know, If you look at the slide, you'll see something on the slide, obviously like a little blotch of something. That's the area you want to look at. That's the area you want to have where that light that's coming from the illuminator is going to go right up and illuminate that little thing when you put the when you put the slide on the stage before I even look in the oculars okay that's going to help you and all you do is you put on a stage clip rotate around that uh, around the, the little screw the little on uh, wheels that will uh, this that will adjust the stage back and forth side to side until you get it where you want it to be okay then what I do is I take the way I do it, okay, I, and I find this is easiest to do. Then I take the stage and I use my course adjustment and rotate the stage up as high as it'll go, as close to that low power objective as possible, okay? So very as close as you get to, to the lowest objective. That way it gives you a place to start, okay? So it's always a good thing to do. So I start and bring it to the highest position, okay? So I raise the stage up to the highest position with the course adjustment. At that point, what happens, I make sure I still look, I have that sing, that singular circular field of view when I look in the oculars. If you don't, again, adjust the pupillary distance by moving the eyepieces a little bit side to side until you get to one, one field. You don't want to see like two circles of light. You want to see one circle of light where everything is combined, okay? Then what I do at that point is while I'm looking through the oculars, okay, I'm going to grab the course adjustment I'm going to slowly turn it, so I'm going to slowly lower the level of the stage, very slowly, okay? Eventually what's going to happen, you're going to get, not fast, just slow, a slow adjustment of that stage as you go down. Eventually what's going to happen, you might see some color, but nothing's in focus, and all of a sudden something is gradually going to come into focus, okay? So you get it in rough focus at that point. You try to get the best focus you can, you know, with that course adjustment. Once I get it there, then I'm going to take my fine adjustment, which is that outer uh, wheel on the adjustment knob, and I'm going to turn that. Now, don't turn it a lot. Don't be really aggressive. You, you won't have to turn it a whole lot. Just a little bit, a couple fine-tuning uh, turns to be able to get it where now it's in focus. If it looks like it's getting out of focus, then turn it the opposite way. That's pretty logical. You know, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that one out. So then what happens is then now you have it in, in, in focus by using that fine adjustment knob after I got it in a course focus by my course adjustment. At this point, I could take the stage and move it around with that stage control, those stage control little wheels. I can move the stage around until I get to see probably the area I want to see. When I find an area that I really want to look at under high power, I try to get it right in the center, center of my field of view. I want to get right in the middle of that, as close as possible. Don't leave it to the side. Don't leave it at the bottom. Don't leave it at the top. Don't leave it at the left side, but right in the middle. So if there's a, something like a clump of cells that you want to look at, you get that right in the very middle of your field of view, in, in, inside that circular area of light that you see looking through the oculars and looking at the slide. Okay? So that's what you do. Okay? At this point, okay, once you have that... Uh, uh, I, you know, you're, 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 in, you're in good shape. You're getting really, 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 really close, you know, uh, because now you're, you, 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 you know what you want to look at and you're there, but you want to see it closer, you know. If you're like me, you say you want to get a closer look. Sort of like at a concert, you know, you hate to be in the back row. You want to keep on moving closer if it's a, you know, if there's no assigned seats, if it's all general mission. You want to sort of gradually creep closer to the stage, okay. I know the feeling. I've been there, okay. What happens is then at that point, what you do is you rotate it to the next highest power, okay, uh, which might be uh, 10 or might be 40, okay, and you rotate it until it clicks. 
If you don't rotate it and if it don't click, you'll actually see part of that field of view gone. It'll be dark because we don't have that objective lens in the right spot. You rotate it till it clicks. Still looking through the oculars, okay? Now, if you've done it right, you only need to adjust it with your fine adjustment, okay? You don't have to take your course adjustment. You take the smaller knob on the outside and you just sort of very gently turn it until you finally get it into the, into the amount of focus that you want on a higher power, okay? And if I'm gonna to go to a higher power from that, you do the same thing. You just rotate the, uh, uh, the wheel, and then what happens is, you know, you, the, uh, uh, you, so you get to the objective, the higher power objective in the right spot, and again, it should only take fine adjustment to be able to get it where you get to see what you want to see, okay? So that's that's all there is to using a microscope. Enjoy the view. Once I get it where I where I want, you know, if under high power, I could actually move it around. Now, the one thing you have to think about, though, is when you're at high power, sometimes if I move the, the stage a little bit around and just get a different clump of cells or a different area and a piece of tissue, what's going to happen is it might not be in the same focus. And that has to do with a little bit of the thickness of it. And, and what they do is when they prepare these slides, they put some glue and a cover slip on the top of it so that cover slip stays and it fixes that tissue down to the slide. That might be a little bit different. So sometimes you actually have to adjust the fine adjustment even when I, you know, a little bit more when I go, you know, if I look at one spot and it's in focus, and I move the stage a little bit, it might not be in that perfect focus. What do you do? Use the fine adjustment until you get it back in focus. Because again, there's sometimes thickness in cells or closeness to the objective. And again, that's going to be much more apparent on higher power because everything's much closer. Okay. And then sit back, enjoy the view. That's all you need to do. Piece of cake. Okay. A couple other things I want to tell you about a microscope. First of all, magnification power. What magnification are you using? Well, obviously, if you look at your objective, there'll be like a, a 4x, a 10x, a 50x, a, you know, whatever it might be on the uh, objective. However, that with the with the ocular is at is is actually uh, both combined. Okay, there it, it multiplies it. So let's say I'm using the ocular. Ocular is usually between 10 to 20 power, okay? 10 to 20 X. So let's say I have a 10 X ocular. And this will be written on the side of the ocular. You actually look on the side of the ocular and see it'll say 10 X. If it's a 10 X, okay, on the ocular, and if I look at the side of the tube on my objective lens, and it's a 50, all you need to do to tell your magnification is multiply the ocular power 10 times 50, and you have a magnification of 500. If I was going to put in, uh, change that 10x ocular and put in a 20x ocular, okay, then what happens is now, I'm at, and if I leave my objective power the same at 50, what's my magnification? A thousand, because now it's 20 times 50. So that's how I determine what magnification you're looking at something under. Pretty simple, just simple, simple uh, multiplication. Shouldn't take a rocket scientist to figure any of that out, I don't think. So it's it's quite simple. So take the take the ocular power written on side the ocular tube, multiply that by the objective power written on the side of the objective uh, tube, and multiply those two together, and you get your get your power. Okay. So a 10x ocular. Uh, with, a t with a 50x objective gives you a 5x magnification power. Piece of cake. One last thing, okay, is looking at, when you look at something underneath the microscope, sometimes you want to determine the size of something. You want to determine the size, okay? So how do you do that, okay? Um, what happen it's not that difficult it's just a little bit more technical and you have to you'll have to follow this a little bit more okay so when you see something in the microscope and you want to know about how big it is let's say you get a cell and you want to know how about how big it is okay what happens if you know how wide your field of view is you could determine the size of the objects piece of cake so here's how you figure out your size of an object what you do is what you you take the um, uh, the um, uh, lowest objective okay and you take a ruler and stick it underneath there and you'll see the ruler, okay, in, mis in millimeters, okay? So, and that gives you an idea as how wide that, that, um, that field is by just using a, a millimeter ruler that you stick underneath the, underneath the objective. Pretty simple, okay? And that's all you, you figure, figure out with that. So what happens 
is in most cases things are, are not in millimeters. In other words, if you have something that's a millimeter, you're going to be see it with you don't you know you probably don't need a microscope to see it. Most things we have are in micrometers. In micrometers, okay. Uh, so what happens is the only way to determine to convert a millimeter to a micrometer is all you have to do is move the decimal places three points to the right. Really simple. OK, so let's say if the field of uh, view from one side to the other side was 1.5 millimeters. If I take and move my my uh, uh, decimal point three points to the right and I'll do that here. So one, two, three, I have to add a zero there and zero. It's fifteen hundred micrometers. Piece of cake, easy. Move the decimal point three points. If the field of view is two millimeters, then what happens is move it over 2.000. So that's all of a sudden 2,000. So I move my decimal point three over and I have 2,000 micrometers. Okay? Therefore, let's say if I have a field of view that's 1,000 micrometers wide, just for, um, you know, let's, you know, Let's say if I have something in my field of view is 2,000 micrometers from one side. So in other words, I have 2,000 micrometers from here. If I looked at it under low power, I have two millimeters. There'd be two millimeters underneath that field of view. But let's say if something is one half of that, I take one half of the of the 2,000, and the thing would be 1,000 micrometers big. Okay, piece of cake. Okay, so actually it would be one millimeter at that point because if I moved the decimal point over three points this way, one millimeter. Okay, if the field of view is five cells across, if five cells across, and what happens is my field across, you know, the, 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 the distance across is 2,000 micrometers, all I do is divide five into 2,000, and each cell there would be 400 micrometers wide. OK, that's a big cell. OK, so anyway, that's that's about how I determine uh, the size of things. But if I want to go to a different power, OK, you could still estimate the size by knowing the relationship of the different powers of magnification. That's all you need to do. OK, so when you switch from low to high power, you obviously the field of view gets smaller because I'm seeing uh, 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 an area that's closer, which means my field of view is is much smaller. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. So when you look at that, you want to look at uh, you want to. Let me get rid of my picture here again. Okay, uh, so when you look at things, that's why you want to actually look at it uh, under you know look at it under low power to center the object. If I want to determine the, the size, because that I could measure. In other words, if I take under a high power and stick a, a a millimeter ruler underneath there, guess what? I probably don't even see a millimeter. Okay, I might not see much of it, anything at all. So basically, under low power is going to give me the size across my my field of view. So, but let's say I switch from a low power to high power. How do I determine size at that point? Really simple. It's the fraction of the area in the field of view is the same as the ratio of the low to high power. OK, so let's say I have low power objective is 20. My high power objective is 40. Therefore, in the high power objective, I see 20 40ths or one half the area of the slide in low power. So all I do is just to, that's able to determine what that distance is across. OK, so let's say I had 2000 micrometers uh, under low power at, at, at 20x which is actually probably not going to be right, okay? Uh, but if I go to high power, which is 40x, I take I take half, 20 over 40, which is half, half of the 2,000, so my field of vision would be 1,000 micrometers across, okay? That's just simple math. You can think about it, and it makes sense when you when you actually look at it and you think about it, okay? So let's look at these some examples. If low power is 20x, and if high power is 50x, and the field of view under low power is two millimeters. What's the field view under high power? Okay. Well, it's easy. I take tw uh, uh, twenty fiftieths or two fifths of two millimeters, which is eight millimeters, which is 0.8 millimeters. I divide two millimeters by or multiply it by 0.4, and it gets me eight millimeters. Piece of cake. Okay. So how many micrometers is eight millimeters? Move that decimal point over three points. One, two, three, zero, zero. So it's 800 micrometers wide. So if 20 cells fit across that field of view under low power, how many cells would you see under high power? I do the same thing. 
I take two fifths of 20 cells, I'd see eight cells. Okay, it's just really simple math. I mean, it might say, oh, geez, this is I this is too complicated. I was never good at math. It's pretty simple. If you go over this a couple times, it should be pretty simple to figure out. It's just, just basically simple ratios. Okay, and that's all we have with that. And that's how we work with a microscope. Now, what happens is this is a little microscope worksheet. Okay, if we were working with a microscope, you know, it tells a little about rules and stuff like that. But there are some questions down here. Okay. You can actually look at these questions and maybe answer these questions. It'll say, you know, the platform on which the slide placed is called the mm, stage. Okay, so just to test yourself, okay, uh, and here's the thing it says calculate the lens magnification of your microscope. Use 10 power for, uh, uh, for low power and 40 power for high power. So, what's your total magnification? Touch your total low power magnification and your high power. And let's say your, uh, your oculars were 10. Okay, so you could actually figure that out, but you could answer these questions. Uh, they're all from the different uh, diagrams that we had before. Okay, so that's all pretty self-explanatory. You could go over this in, in, when you have a little bit of time. Okay, just for the fun of it, for the heck of it, when you don't have anything else to do. There are a couple of YouTubes you could go and it actually shows you a little bit more about how to actually use the microscope. Um, it can be really helpful, you know, so you can actually, if you, if you go to YouTube, there's lots of places you could go that will show you um, how to use how to use the microscope? I actually tried to see about uh, getting one on eBay, and I was out bid, you know. But uh, there was one that I thought was a really good price for a, a, a decent microscope, and I put in my bid, and I was in the last 15 seconds, and they probably had that automatic jump up from me, and I couldn't get a new bid in after that, so I probably lost it anyway. But anyway, but so I don't have a microscope at home. Okay, so if you if you uh, look at these YouTube's, they should pretty sim be simple, and you can follow those. And there's one that's actually quite long; it's probably about 30 minutes long if you want to look at it. Some lady that's sitting there with and talked about the whole thing about using the microscope, which is excellent. Actually really good good video but uh, and if we if we had if I had known about the COVID before that maybe I would have filled one at the, at, uh, at Tri-C uh, before this but unfortunately that was all of a, I was on vacation when it all happened so I was in Las Vegas when everything went down so I couldn't get back to the school in time for that so anyway um, this just tells you a little bit about how to use the microscope and again since we'll be doing everything from home and uh, uh, either virtual or online uh, you know unless you have a microscope to play around with uh, you're up a creek you know but there might be some time during your career where you will we'll be using a microscope I'm not so sure if microscope use is all that essential for radiography I mean tell me if it is I don't I can't see it but um, it's part of the uh, curriculum so uh, to be complete and I'll not leave you out of anything like that I thought it would be a good idea to, to say a little bit about the microscope to go over it and hopefully um, it should be pretty simple okay so again if you have any questions about any of this please let me know uh, if not um, uh, again be safe and be healthy and we'll talk to you uh, with another video one of these all these videos so hopefully you're enjoying them hopefully you're learning from something from them the thing about the videos also is you could actually speed them up you go faster you could go slower or you could stop in a certain place look at diagrams uh, when we talk about things which is nice which in, sometimes in class we're going so fast so I think the videos are actually maybe a little bit of advantage sometimes over class but not having that interaction or that contact with it, being able to ask questions right away so anyway be safe and be healthy okay